Hi, Patrick. Hi, right, Kevin. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, is Gus in as well? He is. I think he's struggling to. I I just had some trouble getting uh, the permissions to to actually join. Yeah. <laughs> I was very confused when I joined the Uber conferencing as to what's going on. <laughs> I, I imagine that liking it to uh, being at the actual event, stuck outside the door, trying to get in. Yeah, exactly. There he is. Hey, Gus. Uh -huh. Hey, Gus. Hey, dudes. How's it going? Uh, so it looks like we're recording already. Um, I don't know if there's anyone in the moderation panel for this. Um, Presumably, we just need to uh, to kick off. Um, OK, so I'm going to share my screen, and then I'll hand over to, to you guys. Cool. OK, so just screen sharing. Um, Can everyone see my screen? Okay, great. All right, well, then we kick off. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining our session today. Um, we're going to be talking about Fivetran and Allianz, um, programmatically powering your data integration, um, covering a bit about what Fivetran is, um, and then going into some of our API architecture and some real-life use cases. Um, but before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's kick off with um, a round of introductions. Uh, I'm joined by guests, uh, by sorry, by Gus and Patrick uh, from Allianz. If you guys want to to introduce yourselves, and I'll go then. Yep, sounds good. Uh, so yeah, so Gus and I uh, work for a company called Alliance uh, or Allianz. It's pronounced both ways, whatever you fancy. Um, uh, I'm a senior data consultant, and Gus is a developer and technical lead on the product we're going to be talking about today. Um, Alliance works with sort of data solutions and software solutions. So that is what we'll be covering. Great. Looking forward to it. And my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm a senior sales engineer at Fivetran. I come from a data background as well. So I had a small data consultancy before joining Fivetran, working on data architecture um, and a lot of work around building APIs, consuming APIs, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll kick it off. Uh, so from our side, we're just going to cover um, a quick overview and introduction to Fivetran, just look at high-level architecture, what the hell is Fivetran um, going into the data integration tool, looking at some of the REST API use cases. So we have our own REST API. We're going to talk a bit about how some of our customers use it. Um, I'll jump straight into a live demo and actually show you some API interaction of how we can programmatically provision connectors, uh, trigger syncs, and so on. Um, and then putting into practice um, where the guys are going to go into an actual real life use case. And I think that's going to be the more exciting bit uh, than, than what I'll get to cover. Um, so we'll kick it off. So Fivetran, as I mentioned, is a, an automated data integration product. So we take data from hundreds of siloed sources. Uh, you're talking about Salesforce, Shopify. Uh, it could be file based services like FTP or S3 buckets where we deal with files. Um, or even relational databases like Oracle, MySQL, Postgres. We extract all that data, um, we centralize it, and we load it directly into, into your warehouse. And during that process, we don't just um, dump the data in, we follow a, a theme called ELT. So we first extract and load the data, and then we give the customer the control to actually run transformations on the data post load. And that's a really interesting concept because it, it kind of focuses more around the theme that data storage has become cheaper, um, focusing more on, on querying uh, and centralizing all of the data. So just again, a couple of examples. We've, we've come more from the BI world, um, you know, programmatically taking all that data in from hundreds of sources. Business intelligence and dashboards was kind of where Fivetran came from, but now we're seeing more and more use cases where that same data is being used to feed data models for machine learning or more advanced AI um, and building data products, you know, even in, in the e-commerce space around recommendation engines and, and such that work on that. So looking at Fivetran REST API, so I'm just going to talk about what it is 
Um, we actually built our first API this year, and I'll actually jump into the product in a moment to show you how the dashboard works and how you provision connectors, how we would actually ingest some of that data, store it in a data warehouse like Google BigQuery or, or Snowflake, um, and then how we were going to use the API to actually interact with the product uh, much more efficiently. So I guess the first obvious reason we, we built the API, um, more heavy power user customers want to interact with the product um, and do a lot of CRUD-based functionality uh, through the API. So we're talking about provisioning hundreds of connectors versus just a handful, um, managing permissions and, and even integrating the product uh, directly within their own, with their, uh, integrating Fivetran directly within their own product. Um, and that's one of the more exciting use cases we'll get to um, at the end of this. And that's what we call Power by Fivetran. So a lot of our customers consume Fivetran directly where Fivetran sits in the background, um, powers some of the functionality that's going on without the customer realizing that Fivetran is, is bringing the data from A to B. Um, and that's, that's Powered by Fivetran, one of our newest products. Um, as I mentioned, we also have use cases around data management, permissions, and so forth. So why, why we built this, and again, I think the, the, the rest, uh, the, the Powered by Fivetran use case is the most important one. Um, for example, if a user wanted to connect um, to an account without actually going in through um, the Fivetran dashboard, you know, being able to bake that in directly into your own product where the user can click the, the connect option, authorize it, and open up that channel of data that's going to flow into the product. Um, and then, of course, the other use cases we mentioned as well. So I'm going to go through a little exercise here and just actually show you how we go through this. In uh, I'm going to use uh, Postman to actually interact with our API, um, just show you some of the documentation, how we actually go and manage some of this API functionality from uh, figuring out what connectors we've got set up on our account uh, and then configuring a new connector and as well as triggering and forcing some syncs. Um, and this was an interesting topic because one of the roundtable discussions we just did earlier, someone asked, you know, how do you use APIs to standardize and uh, connect to much more sources than you might already be doing? Um, and that's really at the core of, of Fivetran is, is using uh, Fivetran via the API or via the UI to provision all of these sources you're connecting to. So I'm going to jump out of this for a second before I continue on here and just give you a look at Fivetran uh, as the UI before we go into some of the API examples. Can, can everyone see my screen okay at this, at this level? Zoom in a little bit, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, is that better? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so this is a basic dashboard. Um, I've got some configurations, some connectors already configured here. If we were going to add additional connectors, uh, we can go through the entire list. We can connect Google Analytics. You know, Salesforce have already got connected. Uh, we have over 200 connectors there now. So you can go in and within a couple of minutes, authorize that connection uh, and get that data flowing in. So just to give you an example, looking at, at Salesforce, um, we've got a connector that's up and running here. It's syncing data almost every six to 12 hours. Uh, we can see the sync has been running smoothly in the background. And this is fine if I'm, all I'm doing is, is running a, a few connectors here that are easy enough to manage. But in more complex scenarios where we're dealing with permission groups, we're dealing with multiple connectors, multiple connections, uh, the API really kind of helps you get more granular around that. Um, so that's where I'm going to just jump into the uh, API directly. So one of the things we would do just to get kicked off. You can fetch your API key directly through the dashboard. Once you've got the API key, you're pretty much ready to, to go. Um, in the, the slides here, I'm actually using curl, uh, some of the examples. So if you've got access to the slides, you can, you can use this as an example as well. I'm actually just gonna use Postman because um, it's a little easier to document and actually show the experience um, for this. But we're gonna go through an exercise where, I just go back a few slides. We're going to go list all the groups um, on my account. So that means if I've got multiple warehouses configured, um, let's say Google BigQuery, you know, maybe I have five BigQuery instances with, with connectors feeding into all of them. Um, I'm going to first of all figure out what groups I want to connect to. And then I'm going to look at a specific group and have all the connectors returned that we're working with there. 
And then we're going to look at a specific connector and just learn a bit more about that one connector and then trigger a sync. And then once I do that, I'm just going to go back into the dashboard to show you how we force that connector sync. Uh, and then finally, just how we can provision a new connector. Um, and so all this just kind of showing how all of this can power uh, a lot of data integration from the back end of your product. So I might need to zoom in again. Uh, this could be a challenge with uh, Postman in this case. Um, no, yeah, I can actually zoom in. Does that work? Okay. Okay, so the first thing I mentioned we're going to do is just fetch fetch all the groups. Um, so I've already configured my API key here to see what I have access to. Um, I've also got access to a number of accounts here. Um, what I would do in this case, for the example, I'm just going to fetch one of the groups I want to look at more detail. Um, jump over to the next API to actually fetch all the connectors in that group. Um, in this case, I've, I've taken the connector ID, or sorry, the group ID uh, that I'm going to use where, where data is flowing into. So we're going to look at all the connectors I've got configured. Um, in this case, as you saw on my dashboard, I had Salesforce, um, I had MailChimp running, um, I had a five channel log connector as well. And this is going to give me the full, the full data over here. You know, we're looking at interesting data like sync frequency, how often we're syncing data from that source, um, and what the status is. What was the last state of the connector? Did we finish the last sync? Is it going to uh, continue processing and so forth? And so if we take this, you know, let's look at a, a specific connector. Um, if I jump over to the API, that's going to allow me to, to just uh, um I'm going to look at the, the log connector. Um, and this is going to give me all the information I need about that one specific connector, uh, very, the various configuration that you might want to change programmatically as well. Um, and again, the status, which can really play a big role if you're automating a lot of this in the background. If I want to actually go and trigger a sync, so let's, let's use that five turn log connector as the example. Um, I'm going to do send a post request to this API. Um, I've passed in the actual connector ID um, with the uh, appended URL here for force. Um, so that has successfully triggered a sync. And if I now go back into the dashboard, I go into my five trend log connector, you can now see that's that syncing data. Um, and the nice thing about this is we can we can actually look at response based data from that sync um, once that that sync is successfully completed. Uh, there's some functionality Fivetran is even working on to enable um, post-sync webhooks. Uh, so you could trigger all kinds of other functionality off the back of a successful sync, um, like a transformation. Um, and then finally, the last thing just to show you is, is how we would actually go about creating a connector. Um, so this can be done. Um, we could be creating multiple connectors at once. I'm just actually going to create a single connector right now. Uh, the service I'm passing in here is the five trend log connector. Again, the group ID I figured out earlier, and then I'm just defining the schema. And this is the schema and how it's going to land in my warehouse. So I'm going to send this request. Uh, and what this should be doing now uh, is it's provisioning that connector in the background with the configuration parameters I've passed. Uh, this can be more complex or simple depending on the connector or the source you're actually connecting to. Um, and the required uh, parameters you have there. So you can see here, connector has successfully been created. Um, we now can go in back into the dashboard. I'm just gonna give it a refresh here. Sorry, refresh. Yeah, perfect. So we can see we've got uh, the new connector provisioned. The historic sync is already running, so it's fetching all the historic data we need now. And there we have it. Um, that is as straightforward as our API is. Um, I think, yeah, you can look through these slides uh, if you need be afterwards. I didn't want to keep switching between slides and, and live demo, but this goes through all the exercise steps of uh, provisioning this. If you are testing it, you can set up a free trial um, and actually uh, request access to uh, the API to, to run a lot of this. 
Um, but I think the most exciting thing, um, what the guys are going to show us is actually putting some of this into practice. Um, and this is what I'm looking forward to, to seeing. So I'm going to hand it over to, to you guys. Switch to this side. Do you want me to give you access to Sorry, whoops. Yeah, if I present, I should be able to take over. There we go. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Cool. So uh, a, a little bit about um, who we are at first. Um, so Gus and I, as I've said, come from a company called Alliance. And within Alliance, we have um, a, a, a section, um, where we have some products built. And we also offer uh, custom data solutions for our clients. Um, so uh, Alliance uh, is a data solutions and software solution company, as I said before. Um, we've worked with a huge amount of clients on, on building them data solutions and helping their companies become a lot more data driven. Um, so we've seen a lot in the past that companies really struggle with finding out a clear way to sort of get automatic data insight um, without a huge amount of manual interaction. Um, and that's where we come in a lot of the time. Um, we've worked with some really good brands, um, some really big UK brands, and also some some global brands, uh, Accor, Four Seasons, WH Smith. Uh, we mainly work in the hospitality and retail sectors. Um, so that's where those clients are coming from. Um, here, there's a bit about our team um, and, and a bit of an instruction for each person. I won't go through it now, but feel free to, to look through later on. So uh, as uh, Kevin was saying, um, we have a particular use case that we want to talk about today. Um, the use case is to do with the Shopify connector that's available in Fivetran. Um, so we're in Alliance and decisively built a, a set of reporting suites which use Shopify data um, to provide the, our clients with automated data insights. Um, we had the aim to be able to Put this connector, put this, um, this suite of reports into the Shopify app store um, so that uh, end users could you know, install the app and have all of their data loaded within a matter of hours and, and be able to use it straight away in a totally contactless process. Um, that's where we came to coming to Fivetran um, and specifically using Fivetran's REST APIs to, to replicate connectors and automatically extract data for this solution. Um, the process we've built allows us to present, you know, analyst quality data insights. Uh, there's a huge amount of information in there from all of the data that we managed to extract from Shopify. Uh, our integration with Fivetran and more specifically their REST APIs makes the full data pipeline automated and contact free. Uh, previously, we were having a lot of manual interaction from members of our teams. And I'll go through that in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, but now we've got this full solution and it's freed up endless resources and reduced our overheads massively. So yeah, on, on to how we're actually using the Fivetran APIs. So, so previously um, we had a very manual process for how we set up these reports for clients um, and how we actually managed to extract their data and load it into our end platform, which is powered by Power BI. So previously um, we've had about the Shopify suite through our website. Um, we'd have to have email the client to manually provide access to their Shopify suite uh, as an analyst. Uh, they, we then ran our in-house built ETL tool, which was our chosen solution previous to Fivetran, against their Shopify store and extracting all of the data into an AWS warehouse. Uh, we connected to the data through Power BI Desktop and then published to a workspace dedicated to the client. We then had an embedded instance to display our Power BI reports in a dedicated web application. Uh, the application uses the Azure Active Directory to grant user level permissions, which was also manual. So, so each step of this was pretty manual and it involved a lot of interaction for, from me and other members of the team on a daily basis. So this is actually what we moved to to try and create this automated process. And I'm going to have Gus, who's our technical lead here, talk to this a little bit more. Yeah, so, so as you can see, this is a bit of a high-level overview of our architecture that we've got for the Incisory product. 
Um, and I'm just going to run through quickly each kind of component in this in this situation. So the entry point is the uh, incisively uh, app uh, backend, which is running on the on an Amazon EC2 instance. So as as a new a new Shopify customer or a store um, uh, signs up for the incisively product, the app is installed um, on their in their kind of account and Shopify. Um, and the and then our our backend gets an event from that, which which we then which triggers a call to the Fivetran API to create one of their connectors, as you have been shown by Kevin previously. Um, then then from then on, the connector is then set up to daily extract data from Shopify, and as you can see, it then puts that data into our RDS instance, which is also in Amazon AWS. Um, and then from that, from there, it kind of goes into our product. Um, the Power BI uses the RDS to power its analytics, and then the incisively app uses the Power BI to power the front end application in Shopify. Oh. Sorry, my kitten is attacking me. <laughs> um, so this is a bit more of a granular view of what we've got going on. So as I said just now, you can see when a client installs incisively via the Shopify App Store, the App Server uses Python API to create a new connector. In the in the thing here, you can see a bit of like just a bit of actual code that we're running in our backend to to do this, um, and how simple and like minimal it is to actually get that done. Um, then once it's done, we just basically fire and forget. We we kind of just sit there and in the background automatically the connector every day. Pulls in the data from Shopify and then pushes it into our into our database, um, and that and that's kind of it. We just kind of sit there and allow that to happen in the background, and we use it in our for our product. Um, and then, if the um, as and when the client then decides to uninstall the app, if like, I mean I'm sure they never will, but if they do, they uh, they that we we then get an event from the Shopify from like the Shopify API, and that triggers us to call the destroy connector. Or the delete connector API in Fivetran. So, the, so this is a bit about the solution after up, up what we are then doing with the data after Fivetran. Um, there's another part of this actually with the, using the logging. So, as you can imagine, we when when a, a new user signs up, we it takes a while for that extraction to initially happen. Um, something that we had a bit of an issue with was we we were just kind of waiting for a set like an, a set amount of time, hoping that some that like like it would have, have like sink in time for the customer be able to be able to see their first bit of analytics. Um, so Fivetran gave us a solution where as, as, as on top of the data that it's extracting from Shopify, it's also putting logs into our database, um, uh, logs from the actual extraction itself, which we can then listen into. Um, and by interrogating that, we can we can listen to sync start and sync end events, which we can then use to trigger our own actions, um, i.e., informing the user that their extraction is ready or their analytics are ready. Um, as well as that, we use AWS Lambda to refresh our Power BI reports. Um, because again, the Shopify connector refreshes every day, and so we want to refresh our Power BI reports every day, and we want the users to have new analytics every day. Um, and then finally, the, the, the Shopify app front end part of the project um, pulls all of its data directly from Power BI. So by that point, it's all been pulled in by, by uh, to our database. It's then been transformed by Power BI and shown to the user in Shopify. Yes. No worries. So a bit, a bit about the benefits that we found from, from Fivetran. Um, so Fivetran has allowed us to entirely retire our in-house ETL tool that we built specifically for the purpose of um, Shopify as well as some, some Google connectors. So from doing that, we're using far less resource costs in maintenance and fixes. We were spending uh, roughly 500 hours per year on our in-house tool. Um, which only covered Shopify, Google platforms, and no other connectors. And as Kevin's, pre Kevin's previously mentioned, there's an abundance of connectors in Fivetran, a lot of others that we, we now use for our data extraction and moving data around. Uh, we estimated the cost saving from that is about $62,500 a year. Um, we've had large savings in time and materials, freeing up resources and allowing us to focus on our core product and not the maintenance around it. We also have a 24-hour support desk at Alliance, 
and all of our failed jobs from previous solutions we were using uh, were being sent off to our support desk and they were having to deal with tickets uh, constantly. Uh, and as you can imagine, the failures weren't in regular office hours. They were getting tickets all through the night. Um, we were averaging about 60 support tickets per month on data extraction failures. And now we have zero, uh, thanks to Fivetran being self-healing. Um, also using the logs provided by Fivetran has led us directly integrate with our AWS environment to trigger each part of the process from initial connect construction and data extraction to the user seeing their data visualized in the incisively front end. Uh, Fivetran slotted right in. It wasn't a challenge to be able to fit Fivetran in. And that is it. That's our use case for, for, for Fivetran and Fivetran REST APIs. Great. Thank you, Patrick and Gus. So maybe we can uh, we can mm -hmm. kick off some some questions if anybody has anyone you can write questions in the chat I believe. I see some people joining. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see if anyone else has any questions, but um, I don't know, maybe you guys, I think Patrick, you mentioned a bit as well, what, what the kind of next steps look for you guys in terms of uh, leveraging the API or what, what you'd even like to see in the future to give a look into your, your roadmap. Yeah. So, well, for, for our solutions, so, so when we talk about incisively, we've, there, there's four suites built into incisively and Shopify is just one of them. And it was sort of our first stop for, for building a solution, but we haven't built a fully contactless solution for the others, which leverage Facebook data and, and uh, Google Analytics data and Google AdWords data. So, you know, our, our next immediate step would be moving on to making those fully contactless processes as well, um, which would you know, save even even more time. And um, at the moment, as you know, we, we're using Fivetran for them, but we, we're doing them um, on a manual building each connector for, for its purpose at the moment. Nice. Um, what, is there any other kind of APIs you work with? I mean, like Fivetran, Fivetran aside, uh, given it's, it's API days, um, any other interesting uh, insights or, or challenges you've kind of come across with other APIs you work with? I'll try that for Gus. I'm not, uh, not, not technical, so I haven't personally. I mean, to be honest, the, the Shopify API was uh, in its, is in itself a bit of a beast, you know. Um, and again, that's one of the reasons why it's so useful. We, we like using your API. Um, we don't have to worry about keeping up with the constant version changes on the top of the Shopify API, you know, and making sure that, that well, just keep like keeping the knowledge within the company about how the Shopify API works. It's again in itself is enough work to do. For one person, like we should be focusing on our insights as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. And did you, did you leverage the like the ERDs and stuff when you were looking at Shopify with with Fivetran? Then looking at the data structure of it. The what? Sorry. The like the entity relationship diagrams you have in the the Fivetran docs, like the Shopify, for example, that show you how all the tables are. Yeah, so because we had already we built we built our in-house ETL tool, we sort of already had a, not, a lot of that knowledge done because we had we had built the full schema out for ourselves and and, and the entity relationship diagrams. Uh, so uh, for us, we didn't need it, but I mean, I've, I've had a look at them, and, and definitely for someone who's not used to um, or hasn't you know spent two years building all of their own stuff first, it would be super helpful. Yeah. I can imagine. I, I recently started looking through um, SAP APIs and for some of the ERP systems, and uh, yeah, it can just be a, a, a quite a challenge trying to wrap your head around some of those API structures. Sure. Also, the Power BI API is quite unforgiving. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we to go into that. Yeah. My fault. <laughs> At least, at least we get to work with more uh, REST-based APIs these days than, than SOAP-based or uh, <laughs> anything else. Well, great, guys. I mean, I think we're, uh, 
we're a bit short um, on time. Well, not, we're not short on time. We've actually wrapped up a bit earlier uh, than planned, but um, I think we've managed to cover everything. It uh, doesn't look like there's any other questions that have come in. Um, but yeah, so I would say thank you uh, from from us, and yeah, great to chat through your your implementation. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Feel very very honoured. All right, thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.